Um, so last class we were introducing the whole idea of binary and gates and uh, digital logic. So we have this idea that a digital signal is one that has discrete values of it, where analog can take any value, digital has specific ones. And um, depending on the digital system you're used, there will be different numbers of states that are allowed. If we're counting with hands, there's 10 states allowed, basically, 10 fingers. Um, and other digital systems throughout history have existed, and all with the same idea that you have a finite number of states. Um, binary, specifically, has two states in it, either the off or the on state. Um, and there's different names given to them. Uh, if we're specifically talking about Boolean, we'll be using false and true. Um, binary, though, will have other names frequently given to it that are, for the most part, equivalent. Uh, for example, 0 and 1 is what we'll mostly use in tables and in, um, things like that, where 0 is also equivalent to the off state or a low state. Um, so when we represent binary, you'll see it in this class frequently shown in time. So again, just like any graph, time is on sort of this axis we're saying and the value of the binary digit is on the y-axis. Um, so the, the difference being that there's only two possibilities here, a one and a zero. This in-between stuff is uh, basically doesn't exist in our world. We're just considering the case where it's zero or it's one. And um, in general, we'll talk about at specific time points here. So we'll we don't need to, but we'll discuss it for the beginning part of this course as if it's just at this time unit here, and then the next time unit, and the next time unit. We don't consider these in between times. Um, gates are what operate on binary digits. Um, so a gates have a number of inputs and a number of outputs. Uh, in most of the examples here, we'll be talking about two inputs and a single output. Um, so these are the, the basic gates, so it's basically what we'll consider. You can have a number of inputs and a number of outputs in a Boolean function. In particular, you'll often have um, multiple input gates, like three or four will routinely come across in this class. Um, what a gate does is defined by its truth table. So this example is an OR gate. And an OR gate, the output is one if each input is one, or both of them are one. So it's an or statement of if one or the other is one, the output is one. When both are zero, the output zero. Um, if you want to think about how it's built, you can consider it as two switches in parallel. So if either switch is on, the output is on. And if both are on, the output is still on. Um, so when we talk about basic gates and basic building blocks, this is the sort of representation we use. We have a Boolean function um, where A and B are the inputs and Y is the output. Uh, the operator here means OR, not plus in this context. Um, and we'll have a logic schematic symbol. So we'll build up larger schematics using this symbol and we can connect a number of them together and different gates together. And again, they have the two inputs, A and B, and the output Y. Um, this is the truth table for the gate, and there's truth tables for each of the fundamental gates, as well as showing the dynamic behavior. So in time, when the input is 0, 0, the output is 0. So these two things are just the same information represented in different ways. Um, and especially in the labs, you're basically going to see this representation more often from the simulators, um, which is why it's good to be familiar with that. The AND gate is the next basic gate. Um, so this gate, the output is 1 when A and B are 1. Uh, the NOT gate inverts the output, so the output is just the inverse of the input. So here's an example of how a larger um, schematic is connected together based on a few simple gates. So if you need to find the output, um, if you have a large schematic with a bunch of stuff and you can add more gates to it. Um, we could have another AND gate connected somewhere. Uh, all you do, and you can have, as I said before, you can have multiple outputs. 
so we call this x, uh, you simply can go through the whole diagram with each possible input. So for example, if 0, 0 is an input here, you just go 0, 0. So the output of the AND gate, based on the truth table, is 0. Um, the 0 goes up here, 0 goes down here, the NOT gate inverts it to 1, you get a 1 there, and a 1 there. So then the output y equals 1, x equals 1, so then you can fill in this column. Um, oh, that's 0, sorry. Because this is an AND gate, not an OR gate. And you can just keep going for the whole, every possibility. Um, if you have to write the Boolean function of a diagram, which we'll use later to reduce the diagram, to simplify it, and to avoid having to go through every single state. Uh, so as I had shown before, the Boolean operators, the AND is this dot, OR is this plus, and NOT we show with a line above it. Um, so you can just, starting with, say, A and B, you can say this point here is A and B. Um, if you want, you can consider other points, so A and B, I'm saying, is equal to C. So the output here is not C, which is equal to not A, B. Um, this point is the same as C or A and B. Um, and finally, we have an OR gate. And as I had said before, if this point C, which is the same thing as A and B, um, the output here is C OR with C not, and simply substitute um, the values that we have found. So that's an example of how you can write the final Boolean output. Um, likewise, if you're given just the function, you can derive the schematic diagram. So if you're given just this, uh, you can sort of do the opposite to get to that state. So again, you can just start at one point. You can say, okay, I have y equals a and b. So you draw the AND gate, and you say this is equivalent to that gate, and you just work through the whole diagram. <coughs> um, so you can do a few examples of that. And as I said before, from the course website, there's examples to previous year's assignments, which include a bunch of examples of this. The course notes have examples of this. Um, so there's no shortage if you want to do a few and check your results. You'll see little circles in the schematic diagrams. These just mean not is the simplest way to think of it. So we can take an AND gate, add a inverter not gate here. Um, and this circle is what really means not. So if we just draw that, that's a not AND or an AND gate. In a similar way, we can have a not OR gate, uh, which is a NOR gate. The advantage of the not AND and the not OR and 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 NOR gates are that we can actually form all basic operations just using a NAND gate and just or just using an OR gate with just one of those gates. Um, so the simplest example, if we connect the inputs together, we'll, we'll form a um, NOT gate because <coughs> A and B will always be the same and then the output's just the opposite of that because of the, not, the NAND um, function. So in a similar way, you can create other gates like an OR gate. Um, so if you look at the truth table, you see the output is 0 of the OR gate only when both inputs are 0, 0. For the NAND gate, the output is 0 only when both inputs are 1. Um, so what you can see is that you just invert the inputs um, to this gate here, and you'll end up with the OR gate. So that's what we want to achieve. And as I said before, we can generate this by using NAND gates as inverters. Um, and there you have it. So using three NAND gates, you create an OR gate. And why, why we care, so to speak, about this is that you can have a system where you just have NAND gates. You just have millions of NAND gates or millions of NOR gates. And um, just by how you interconnect them, you can create huge uh, devices. So here I've created the AND gate from this matrix of NAND gates. So those same NAND gates could have been connected up um, to create that OR gate example I had. So with the exact same arrangement and just adjusting 
how it's connected, uh, we can create an OR gate oops, or an AND gate. So the final basic gate we consider is the exclusive OR, or the XOR gate. Um, and the XOR gate is what we'll call difference gate. And we'll use it in binary um, adders and subtractors as well, is where it becomes important. And the output, as you can see, is 1 when it's only one of the inputs is 1, but not both. Um, so you might call it the difference gate as well, because it's providing you uh, a high level when the outputs differ, but it's low if they're the same. And you can implement it from other basic gates as before. Uh, if we add an inverter on the output, we get the exclusive NOR or XNOR gate, um, and it provides the opposite functionality. So the output is high when the inputs are the same. If the outputs differ, they're low. So, and that's all the schematics for the basic gates that we'll consider in this course. Um, when we physically build them, I showed a few an example before with switches, and you can consider other gates using switches. Um, the AND gate is just two switches in series. The NOT gate you can consider as a switch with a resistor, such that when the switch is open, the output goes high because it's connected um, through the resistor. When the switch is low, the output's forced to zero. So this is how you could build an inverter. Um, for real integrated circuits, because you don't have switches in your, you don't have a million switches physically in there, um, what we use are transistors, in particular field effect transistors or FET, uh, and they are an electronic switch basically that you can consider when this input is high, the switch is closed. Um, and we'll have complementary versions of the switches such that there is again this little circle. Um, indicating that when the input is high, that switch is open. So if we put a 1 here, uh, this, this is so we can get rid of the resistors in these types of circuits. So if we put a 1 here, that means this switch is, and 1 here, um, this switch is closed, and this switch is open, uh, which means the output goes to ground. And we'll call that complementary metal octified semiconductor um, because it type uses two types, uh, two complementary positive and negative, basically, switch types. And we can build all the basic gates with these sort of electronic switches. Um, so again, here's an example of a NAND gate. And if you want an AND gate, we would just add an inverter on the end. Uh, a NOR gate, and again, if you want an inverter, you can just add if you want an AND gate, an OR gate, you can add an inverter on the end, sorry. Um, there's several different types of logic families, so everything we'll be dealing with will more or less fall into this CMOS category. And this is what most electronics today uh, is, basically, is CMOS. Uh, some, some of the older technologies we won't use at all, like um, resistor-transistor logic or diode-transistor logic. Uh, we probably will run into TTL, transistor-transistor logic, which is one of um, sort of the first really popular logic gates and logic families. And why they differ and why we have these different ones is you have different objectives of each type. Um, uh, really, these are sort of some of the major ones you always consider is speed, power, and size. So, for example, technologies used for mobile electronics want the power to be as low as possible, typically the size to be lo as low as possible, um, maybe at the expense of speed, though. They don't need to run as fast as possible, and but they'd rather have low power. Stuff built for, um, like, supercomputers, des even desktop PCs to some degree, uh, don't care about power. You've got tons of power. Screw the environment. But you want high speed, so you make that trade-off. Um, so then we talked a bit about number systems. Decimal is the one we all know, um, where you have, you know, one, two, three, et cetera, where each digit uh, has a certain value to it. So this is equal to 3, equal to 20. Um, 
in binary, instead of having that system, what we use is, let me just clear this. What we have is that each value has this um, binary base, base two number system. So rather than being worth 1, 10, 100, 1,000, uh, it's worth 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128. So if you want to convert a number, um, you can basically just, in a similar fashion to how decimal works, add up the equivalent value of that digit. Uh, because we only have to deal with 1 and 0, it's even easier. So the number is either, you either add this or you don't. Um, so in this example, I'm converting from binary to decimal. I've figured out the value for each place here and added it up. Um, for the opposite way, you can simply you can simply consider the value of the number and work backwards effectively. So starting with, for example, 216, um, you can find the highest value that it will fit within. So the value of this digit is 256, so obviously that's no use to us because 256 is higher than 216. Um, so that means there will be a zero there and we can just ignore that. So we put a 1 in the 128 position um, and then we subtract 128 from 216 to get 88. So the rest of these have to add up to 88 now. Um, so then we go 88 minus 64 is 24. So we, this is greater than 0, so we put a 1 here. Um, and the rest of these then add up to 24. Uh, so the next position is worth 32. 24 minus 32 is smaller than 0, uh, so we put a 0 here. We can't use it. So we try again. 24 minus 16 is 8, greater than 0. You put a 1 here. Um, so the rest of these now have to add up to 8. Uh, again, which comes from there. Uh, finally, 8 minus 8 is 0, and that's okay. We can have it 0, just can't be below. So we put a 1 there, um, and the rest of these then have to add up to 0. So obviously we just put zeros in the remaining positions, because you could go through it. Um, 0 minus 4 is below, et cetera, et cetera. Um, we'll use subscript to indicate the base of the number. So base 2, we'll use a 10 subscript 2, means it's binary 1, 0, not decimal 10. So in this case, binary 1, 0 is equal to 2 in decimal base 10. Uh, you may also see a subscript D to indicate decimal, subscript B to indicate binary. Um, check your conversions. If you want, just use Windows Calculator. Or if you have a uh, calculator that does it, that's fine. Um, you'll also see, and we'll use in this class, hexadecimal and octal number systems. So hexadecimal uh, means base 16, and octal is base 8, unsurprisingly. Uh, why these number systems are useful is that you can map them directly. So in binary, um, for example, if you have this, these four digits, and they're 1000, zero, zero, zero. it's equivalent to hexadecimal 8, um, or 1111 is equivalent, for example, to hexadecimal F. So if you have a whole bunch of digits together, you can just write them directly. So you just convert each group of four bits into the um, hexadecimal equivalent using that table. So this way you can convert back and forth. Uh, when we're talking about binary, it's worth noting that we give a name to this group of four bits, and that's a nibble. Um, and eight bits we'll call a byte. Uh, so two nibbles make a byte. I guess it's supposed to be a joke, but I don't know. That's the actual name for them. Um, with octal, instead of splitting into four, we split it into bits of three. But again, you do the same sort of process where you just take three bits, convert them to the octal, and write it all together. Um, so the advantage of this is that you can easily write down if you have an address or something. You can write down a hex number pretty easily, email it to someone, and they can convert it back if needed. 
Um, and when you're programming and everything like that, you almost always will use hexadecimal for this reason if it has to deal with the bits. Uh, BCD, binary coded decimal, is a number system where rather than, rather than converting to decimal entirely, we simply convert parts of the number. So if you say you had the number 273 um, and you want to convert it to BCD, what this means is that each digit of the binary, each digit of the decimal number just gets converted to a group of four binary bits. Um, so three becomes zero one, oops, zero zero one one, seven becomes zero one one, and two zero zero one zero. Um, so it's somewhat wasteful because we're only using from zero to nine. So if you had two ninety nine, it becomes zero zero one zero. This nine becomes one zero zero one, and this nine becomes one zero zero one. Um, so in BCD, the four did bits map just to a binary bit. So you can't see anything, for example, if you had uh, a BCD number, this is invalid um, because this is equal to nine, but this is too big. That can't map to a bit um, because if you go back to the table, you'll see 110 is equivalent to 14 in decimal, which makes no sense. Um, so that's not possible. So that's why BCD is wasteful, and it's used a little bit. We'll probably use it in a few labs, but that's about it. Um, so that's actually a review of all of last class. So I'll take a five-minute break before starting the new stuff. If you want a bit of lunch or something, I don't know.